Hi, I'm Gary Stearman, and across the table from me today is Steve Quayle. Uh, Steve, you've done a lot in your life, and uh, you're an author. You are a producer of great videos, and and I just want to say that your True Legends series is really good. It's dramatic, and it it's more than good, it's true. And in this day in which we live, the truth is valuable beyond measure. Well, information, Gary, is the number one commodity in the world. I mean, any every database, every data bank has got so much information, and people are paying for the most minute uh, or minutia uh, bits or bytes of information. So what I've tried to do over the years, I've been uh, a, a video producer, a writer, an author, a researcher, is to give people a different view of history. It's my contention that everything is basically, excuse me, it's my contention that everything is primarily done to deceive and to channel people into basically an intellectual slaughterhouse. And when I say an intellectual slaughterhouse, where the truth has no relevance, and what we're watching is controlled narratives without any truth. And we were talking earlier that he who controls the narrative controls the outcome. And so what's a challenge is to break through the fact that people automatically believe if it's on any of the television stations that it has to be true. So the quandary is, who's telling the truth? Where can you look to find the truth? And if everything you see on network TV, pretty much, and they're all owned by the same uh, techno elite and the billionaire zillionaires, the bottom line is that they have an agenda. And the agenda, plain and simple, is the people that are watching us right now, they are to be taken out, taken out, destroyed, because even the World Economic Foundation all of the quotes in history by the technological elite, by the most wealthy elite, i.e. Rockefellers, Rothschild, is that the planet has too many people, and they want to take the planetary population, they, the technological elite, down to 500 million. And speaking of technology, everybody loves technology. You know, we all grew up loving technology. In the cars, what's, what's next year's model going to have, you know, that this year's doesn't have? In the kitchen. All kinds of technology to help you cook. I don't care where you go. We've been a techie society. We love technology. But I, I've got to tell you, Steve, I've reached a point where I'm looking at some of the technology today and it's scaring me to death uh, because we're, we're talking about – uh, machinery, if you will, that can think for itself. AI, it's called, artificial intelligence. And um, and I'm thinking to myself, well, maybe we've gone a bit too far. I don't know. What do you think? Well, I think we're so far gone, we're over the edge. And when you've got, in essence, robot language supposedly defined by the programmers breaking out of that program, which has happened initially yeah. to Google, when you've got robots talking about they want to get rid of humans, you've got robots talking about uh, uh, being free of human control, and the idea is that that people don't understand the robot technology, and I've talked about it. I'm one of the first guys, and this is important, not to brag, but to tell people the day will come when you will have demon-possessed robots. I categorically reject artificial intelligence. I do wholeheartedly embrace the idea of a evil spirit inhabiting the technology. By wholehearted, you mean you believe it, but you don't like it necessarily. Oh, yeah, I believe it. I'm sorry. There's no endorsement of it. Yeah. You know, Gary, the interesting thing about Hollywood is they have previewed, I believe, many times the future because of the occult influence in it. Because so many people that are into alternate forms say everybody wants to know the future as long as it doesn't entail God. Right. And, and I think that what's interesting is, is that, like, I'm watching so many ancient this, ancient that shows. If you notice the spirit world, there's so many ghost shows, ghost hunter this, ghost hunter that. I don't watch it. I'm just aware of all of it. Right. And, and I want to make that clear. 
And even the situation with some of the most sinisterly wicked movies about open cannibalism and about uh, there's there's some of the most elite people going to parties where they actually eat people. Interesting, a television series named V, I don't know, 20 years ago, was talking about the very same thing of reptilians who come to Earth, they take on a period of time human form, and the idea is to seduce humanity because they want to eat humanity. And it's just like one of the, you know, one of the most important uh, uh, animations, and young people are into anime, and uh, Attack on Titan. It's all about giants. It's all about cannibal giants. It's about a giant village that and, and the people that are trying to protect the humans and where do they get that narrative from? This is Japan. This is a Shinto faith, largely, with the exception of Christian converts. Or this is primarily someone that has a history of giants. And most people don't understand this. As I research the world, I have yet to find a civilization that does not have a giant history, refer to giants, or even have them in the museums. They just found, I believe it was a seven and a half foot sword in either Japan or China, and I, I, it, but it was just recently, in the last week. And so giants are a fascinating thing, especially to children. Jack and the Beanstalk. Sure. And, and, and you know, fee fi fo fum I smell the blood of an Englishman. It's interesting because blood gives off a frequency when it dries. And we're told in the Word of God, the Bible, that it was Abel's righteous blood, and he was murdered by Cain, that cried out to God. If that's true, and there's a frequency emitted, which I believe very definitely there is, the Bible tells us life is in the blood, then you see the bloody nature of the planet, whether it's war, whether it's the slaughter of the innocent, the unborn, you know? And it, it's just getting worse, in my opinion. Today, for instance, we are hearing the story that 250,000 Ukrainians have died. Last week, it was 300,000 Russians. That's a half a million people. And I, and I want the young people to understand one of the most interesting, I would say, uh, directions for the future is there are people that want only 500 million people to be living on the planet. And the famous Georgia Guidestones... You know, and those 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 were uh, paid for by some of the billionaires who are the most outspoken anti-human hating entities. That means right now with the world population, it's going to have a billion people have to die. But you go to the Book of Revelation, which all of the people, it, you know, they they just they don't understand the book. The Bible tells us about the day, which I believe is now, where billions of people are going to die. You know, as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking, you know, in my lifetime, we've talked about international war, uh, world wars one and two, and we had this country going against this country, and this country going against this country, and we had the the uh, uh, those who were persecuted, and the Jews driven back to their land, 1948, and War was kind of uh, something that you could uh, understand <clears throat> in terms of despotism, in terms of this side seeking power over that side. But in our era, war is becoming something entirely different. It's, it's, it's surreptitious. It's beneath the surface. And you have huge masses of power moving against each other, but you, you don't see it in the daily news so often. And yet it's there, and every now and then it raises the hair on the back of your neck to think what's happening. Well, I would say this. The subterfuge is one thing beneath the surface, but the in our face is another thing. We're just talking, for instance, about the greatest chemical spill in the history. And even it's going to, be, it's going to exceed the uh, chemical spill in Bhopal, India, uh, however many, you know, 10, 20 years ago, whatever it is. But what's problematic is this. At the end of everything, whether it's war, whether it's genetic engineering, whether it's the uh, attempt at immortality through technique or technology, transhumanism, uh, terminated, everything points to this. Somebody very evil, and the only evil entity I know that can control all of the world's leaders is Lucifer, is 
trying to destroy humanity on an accelerated basis that you could have managed, and obviously you've lived longer than I have, but now... In comparison, the only thing you can compare it to is like World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam. In a very short response, is there hope? Always in Jesus. You know, I asked the Lord that. What is hope, Lord? And he gave me an acronym. This is cool. His, Jesus, overcoming power every day. Wow. Wow. I like it. I like it, too, because, you know, it's hard. If we keep our eyes on Jesus, the, the scripture is very clear. He's able to keep us in perfect peace as we keep our eyes on him. The promises of God are the only thing that keeps me sane. Somebody says, how can you live with everything you know? I said, by the grace of God and my calling. That's why we're offering to everybody the peace at this time. And we're not talking Chamberlain talk. Yeah. Yeah, I want to make that clear. We're talking the Prince of Peace, Jesus. You know what's interesting? The fact is the Lord said, you're going to go through some stuff. You're not going to go through it alone. And that is the most wonderful, glorious thing. That's the only thing that gives me, quote, unquote, peace. His overcoming power every day. He's Steve Quayle and a man of wisdom. I'm Gary Stearman. We'll see you soon.